cold crashing. It's not having an accident in the winter. Stay tuned and you'll find out what it is. Hello everyone, Coach Chris here with Wolf Moon Brewing. Here again with question of the week. This week's question comes from Ped. Ped asks, question of the week idea. What is cold crashing? I still myself don't understand why or how to do it. All right, Ped, here we go. Cold crashing is a process that we as homebrewers and commercial brands use as well to help clarify or make your beer clearer. When we cold crash beer, the yeast goes into hibernation mode. And when they go into hibernation mode, they start to clump together. When they clump together, they get a little bit heavier, and then they will fall to the bottom of your fermentation vessel. Along with other items that are in suspension in the fluid, they'll clump together as well and start falling out of suspension to the bottom of your fermenter, thereby giving you a clearer beer. Do we need to do it? It's really up to you. It doesn't really need to be done, but a lot of us like to do it on occasion, especially for a Pilsner beer or any beer that should be crystal clear. How do we do it? Well, the simple answer is you just take your beer once it is completely fermented and get it really cold. How you accomplish that depends on the gear that you have available to you. In my case, I have a fermentation vessel that is a chest freezer with an Inkbird temperature controller on it. I can set that temperature to whatever I want and it maintains that temperature within a degree or two. I just set my temperature to 35 degrees and let it take the 24 hours or so for it to get down to that temperature and let it sit for three, four days at that cold temperature and my beer has now been cold crashed. Other options are if you have a refrigerator that's big enough to hold your fermentation vessel, then go ahead and just put it in there. Most fridges are somewhere around 35 degrees, so you're good to go. Just leave it there. You don't have to adjust it too much, but you can crank the temperature all the way down to its coldest setting to make sure. If you're so lucky that your fermentation vessel has coils inside it, you can pump glycol through it or really cold water for the two or three days to drop the temperature. If you live in an area of the country where it's really cold and you have an uninsulated garage that stays above freezing, you could put it in your garage and try that. Really up to you on how you want to get it that cold, but the trick is to get it down to about freezing or just above freezing, and you want to hold it there for three or four days. That will cold crash your beer and allow all the sediment and all the yeast to clump together and get heavy enough to fall to the bottom of your fermentation vessel. And then once you transfer it to your kegs or your bottles, you've got a real nice crystal clear beer. Another option is if you're going to be kegging your beer, you can just transfer your beer into the keg, put your keg into your kegerator or wherever you're gonna be serving it, put a little bit of CO2 on it to purge the air out, take the CO2 line off of your keg and let it sit there for two or three days, four days, whatever you want to let it cold crash. Once you're done letting it cold crash, pull a couple of ounces off of the keg until the beer runs clear. Then you can carbonate it using your forced carbonation process that works for you. Now, if you are cold crashing and you are bottling your beer, Make sure you don't cold crash it for too long as you can drop too much yeast out of suspension and then you won't have any yeast in your bottles to eat the priming sugar to carbonate your beer. When you're transferring your beer to your bottling bucket and adding your priming sugar, you can add also a little bit of yeast and that will help the process if you've cold crashed it for too long and you're afraid that you might not have enough yeast in your beer to carbonate it. So Ped, that's how and why we cold crash beer. I hope that's answered your question. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video today. If you have any questions that you'd like answered, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. While you're down there, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell to be notified anytime I post a new video. While you're down there, go ahead and smash the thumbs up button for a like. Remember, home brewing is really fun, but so is drinking responsibly. I'm Coach Chris, and we'll see you next brew. That's watching. Somewhere around 35 degrees, plus or minus a couple degrees Fahrenheit. Fire. Things in the beer get heavier. The vessel has coils inside it. You can blump 